Okay, folks, this video is to give you guidance on how to create your competency one. Okay, so I'm on the requirement section. So here said the part one descriptive statistics analysis. And then it is asking you to insert a new column in the database that contains annual sales. And annual sales is the result of multiplying those two columns. And then it asks you to cal calculate mean standard deviation skill, five number summary, interquartile range, etc. And then there are two questions that you need to answer. So I have an example data set right here. In the example data set, I have these are the annual cells. So to get you enter this column, this column is not going to be in your original data set. To calculate annual data set, you are going to type equal to F6 times V6. F6 is this, annual cell per square feet multiplied by uh, square feet. So that gives you annual cell. And then once it is done, you can drag and drop. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so this part is done. Now you're going to calculate the following, mean, standard deviation, skew, and so on. So if I go to my data set, so these are the things that I have to calculate. For mean, I'm going to say equal to, I'm going to write equal to in the Excel formula, A-V-E-R-A-G-E, -E, average, left parenthesis, and then highlight myself. Right parenthesis, and I'm done. This is the mean, okay. And for the standard deviation, I am going to use Excel formula again. Similarly, if I use the Excel formula, STDE B B six B twenty five B six to B twenty five. If I move the data set, you see B six. It starts from here, from B and then six, B6 to B25. Now remember, your data set this is an example data set, but your data set is going to be much larger. So be careful about that. Don't uh, make a mistake on that one, okay. So this, uh, next is the skew. So for the skew, I do the same thing skew is b6 to b25 and this is the formula skew you can see it's left skewed and so on interquartile range you have to type this long formula for the interquartile range and if you type this is your interquartile range formula quartile 3 minus quartile 1 you need to be very careful quartile dot in and then your cell range comma 3 that gives you third quartile minus quartile inc and then your cell range comma one that gives you the first quarter and the difference is interquartile range and mean <coughs> and the mean is are uh, the same the formula are uh, equal to m i n mean and then you can highlight the cell parenthesis call you are done max in the same way so you are going to calculate the max by entering the same formula as max you can see the formula in the formula bar max b6 b25 and then quadrant one you can say copy and then you can say quadrant one is this is quadrant one okay first quadrant now you have done it for the square feet now remember you have to do it for all the variables sometimes i have seen students have done just one and then copy and paste in the word document no no that's not going to work you have to do for all of those however in excel it is so easy you, you can just take your cursor on the bottom uh right corner and then as soon as the positive sign shows up hold the left mouse button and drag and then drop and you are done okay so you have done this now let's see 
Now create a box plot. Okay, now you have a box plot of what? Box for annual sales. Okay, this is annual sales, so you are going to create the box plot. So I'm going to just highlight the data set and I'm going to say insert and then all charts, the recommended chart, and then all chart. Then I choose box plot. I'm going to say okay. Now this is my box plot, and then you can change the chart title. You can say annual sale. Double click on this, and then you can double click, and then you can say annual sale. Annual sale. Now once it is done, once it is done, you can drag it down here that is done okay so your box plot is ready remember your box plot is not going to look like this because your data set is different okay so next you are going to create a histogram i'm going to come back to this question there are questions that you need to answer so create the histogram so let me create the data um, the uh, graphs first and then i will come back so now you're going to create the histogram of uh, sales per square feet. Which one is sales per square feet? Sales per square feet is right here. Sales per square feet. So I have to create the histogram for this one. So I highlight this and then I say insert recommended chart, all chart, histogram. Now you're done with Instagram. Then you can change the title, double click on that. And then you, you say sale per square feet. Per square feet. And now you can drag it down to the bottom of the data set. It is right here. Now you can see nicely you have the graphs and all the calculations above it. Okay, now you have some questions. Does it look symmetric? That's, create, that's corresponding to the box plot. Does it look symmetric? So you are going to go to the right side, create a text box, and then you're going to answer these questions, okay? So without answering those questions, your com is going to be incomplete okay so in the text box you answer those questions and the reason i want you to use the text box to answer this question in that way you do not have to cut and paste on all of those in a word document and then you will be able to save some hassle okay all right so part two what i did i copied the data set from part one so this is the same part that you need need to show so you're done so let me just go back to the requirement so part to your report it has three sections section one two and three analysis section is going to involve because you have to create a scatter for it so i'm going to show you how to create the scatter and how to fit regression line and uh, and uh, r squared on, on that scatter like so bachelor degree versus sales per square feet okay so bachelor degree bachelor degree bachelor degree and sales per square feet so what i did bachelor degree is an independent variable and sales per square feet is dependent variable so i copied and pasted this bachelor degree is an x variable independent degree independent variable and sales per square is dependent variable. So I highlight this and then I say insert, insert, and then I choose scatter and click on the scatter. Now you got the scatter already. Okay, look at this scatter. Now to fit the line, you click on this plus sign and then choose trend line. Click on that, more options. 
And when you click on more options, you're going to have these options. So you can say, um, okay, let me do it again. Trend line, trend line, more option. Okay, so you're going to see, um, let me hide this part. Do it again. So plus sign, trend line, trend line, more option. Yeah, actually it's kind of finicky. You need to be very careful. So when you go there, you choose display equation, display R square, and the next up. And when you do that, you'll see you have the equation on your chart, equation on your chart, and then you have the line also. Now I, I take the equation and the R squared on the clean side, okay, so that your reader can see it. Now, to determine the, the relationship, there are two ways to do it. One, you can look at the R squared and you can interpret, you can say R squared, whatever you get to study R squared, what R squared point one means about the relationship. Another way is to do the data analysis. So you click on the data you are going to have data analysis tool and here is your data analysis tool if you don't have data analysis toolbar you need to um, install it in your Excel and it is very straightforward you just go to file file and then options option, file option, and then add in, click on add in, and then you can see add in, click on that, and then, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Excel add in, and you can say go, and then it will ask you what you want to add in. You check data analysis tool pack and data analysis tool pack VBA and then click OK. Then you will see if you click on data, data analysis toolbar is going to show up in the toolbar section. OK, so now if you click on the data analysis and then uh, the toolbar options is going to show up, you click on regression, say, yes, OK. Now you have to choose Y and X range. Very carefully, this part is tricky because many students make mistakes right here. Okay, so Y, which one is your Y variable? Y variable is right here. This is your Y variable. What is your X variable? This is your X variable. X variable. And then output range, you can choose any output range you want. So I want to have the output right here, right here. And then you can say, okay. I don't, I don't want any of those because you're not needed. Then you say okay, and here's the output. And you can see that intercept, intercept is 268, 268.53, and slope is 7.939 in this data set. Okay, now, are this significant? Look at the p-value right here, this p-value. So if you look at the p-value, let me highlight the p-value, highlight the p-value. Both p-values are greater than 0.05. That means intercept and, and the slope are insignificant. That means you fail to reject the null hypothesis that they are insignificant. If they would be less than 0.05, then they are significant. What about the model? Right here, level of significance is again uh, greater than 0.05. You can look at this point, it's 0.167. So again, in the model good, then is it is it useful? Idea is no. Okay? So, you are going to use those to, uh, to your analysis part. Let me go back there. 
when it says uh, what conclusion uh, uh, can you draw? Is there a negative relationship, positive relationship, or no relationship? So you have to discuss those. You say, if you say in this case, what I will say, I will say is that no relationship exists because significance level for the model is um, at 5% level of significance, the model p value is 0.16. Intercept in the same way and the uh, uh, slope is exactly in the same way. Now remember, you're going to use a different data set. So your conclusion will be different. Now, going back here, you can virtually answer all of those questions right here in the text box. In that way, you don't have to copy and paste and go through that hassle. Okay? So section one, Descriptive statistics is right there. Section two, analysis, you are going to just um, uh, put down your analysis here. And then your Excel, uh, your scatter diagram, what you can do is this. Scatter diagram from page two. This is your scatter diagram. You can say copy. And then you can part here come, and then you can say paste. So your scatter diagram is right there. So all four scatter you can put on this page by copying and pasting right there. And then you can finish your report right there in the same page. So in that way, in a single Excel submission, you are done with COM1, okay? I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you have any question, please let me know, okay?